guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Fuzzlegating Cosplay and today we are back as the guys with To Your Eternity, episode 14. So, uh, last time we met Purana again, Yes, so that's nice. So. She decided to join us on our journey and Fushi rebelled against that at first, like he doesn't want to lose anyone else and he knows that anyone who travels with him is going to be in danger because of the knockers. Like, tried to drag her back to the village. Yeah, he did <laughs> and she, no, she's living her life, she makes her own decision, she's old enough for that. And, uh, but he's dealing with the grief and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the process of understanding Gugu is gone and he's mm -hmm. not coming back and it's no sad, way. but it's life, you know, he's not there yet. He's, he's, he's having a hard time, but Puran is helping and uh, he, he's also struggling with, you know, what does he want to do in life? Because he's getting that conscience and he's like, I want to be my own person, but at the same time, I kind of have to fight the knockers, you know? Yeah, and I mean, being told that your own purpose is just to collect data is a thing. Yeah. yeah it's kind of a... That's not enough. Yeah, it, it kind of, you know, fights with his new conscience that's developing. But in any case, he knows he's got to get stronger. So he's been trying, and with uh, Puran, they wanted to travel to a remote place where he could train, but that did not turn out fine because someone just you know, told them, oh, that boat is full, just follow me into this boat here. And they took that opportunity to separate them and then lock them up and brand them prisoners, despite the fact that they're not. Hmm. So now they are stuck on this prison island that really resembles the Ember, you know, <laughs> what was it called? The, anyway, the, the prison in Avatar. And uh, Puran is stuck somewhere. We don't know where she is, but we want to save her. Fushi managed to, you know, escape. But now he is with those people who captured him in Puran. And they are weird because they're like, yeah, we captured you, but it's all fine. Like, we could help you out. Like, they're too happy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what their deal is, but we'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, he, he needs to find Puran, save her. Mm. And, and in order to do that, he'll have to fight in a tournament. Yeah, he needs to bring out his inner Maximus in a winter tournament. Yes. Are you not entertained? Something <laughs> like that. So let's jump in this episode, see if he adapts well to the arena, and uh, try to learn more about these new characters. Hey, he might use Gugu. He fits the profile. He might use Gugu. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let's go. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when these episodes come out, and check out our Patreon for the full reaction. Let's fight. Oh, and what? <laughs> this episode was too so, fast. <laughs> I'm glad that we learned this new ability of him because I'm really, sh I'm really I hope she's that she's not, not dead. dead. But like last episode, I was wondering, like we've met people, the old man, you know, yeah. Pior Pioran, uh, Reen, Polona, and I was like, if they die, you know, from old age or an accident or something and we're not around, do we still transform into them? Because we did connect with these people. True. So I was wondering last episode if that was still going to be a possibility. Now, he's just turned into Puran and I want to believe she's not dead. I'm so sure she's not dead. I'm, I'm, guessing, sure not. I'm guessing it's the same process as, you know, creating a fruit or creating yeah. an arrow or something. It's just that instead of creating something, he's just, re you know, he's bringing back all the emotions and memories from that person. Same as when they die. It's just that he triggers it instead of his body does it on his own. Switch it up for uh... On and off, uh, yeah, like it's unwittingly. Yeah. If that's something that he can do every time, and it's on command, and and you know he gets to just transform into anything he's met before, anyone he's met, then that's pretty cool. I'm happy about that because that means we get to have new forms without them dying. And that's the thing, like sometimes we'll meet someone, like when we met Gugu, it was obvious that the form of Gugu was gonna be you know, important and it was going to be useful for Fushi's journey. But we were like, we cannot transform into Gugu unless, unless he dies. Dead, yeah. So now we know that he gets to transform without them dying. So that's pretty cool. I'm unless just, she's dead and I don't want to believe so that. I'm so glad that I won't have to draw uh, others dead friend on my board. I'm sure that she's still Well, alive. I mean, people will still die. Of course they will. But this, now... That, that's life. It looks like we might have access to a lot more forms and that's going to be useful so yeah i'm happy i mean it's growth it's his powers are evolving and he's he, he doesn't understand them himself so mm -hmm. he's gonna you know 
have moments like this where he realizes like this was a possibility all along it's just that he didn't understand it so i'm happy and now like we kind of have also confirmation that we can just knock them out and move on so yeah i do wonder people, if people um, always go by the dead by default right they do, yeah, but when the guy at the beginning of the tournament said the rules and stuff, he was saying until, you know, there's no one, you know, no one left and stuff, or last when everyone is last out of commission. Day. But that can mean just unable to keep fighting. Yeah. That doesn't mean death. <laughs> so there you go, but I, went, I do wonder how much that is going to trigger the girl, the guy, the girl from Kanome. I don't remember her name, but... Uh, was it Yanome, you mean? Yanome? What, what did I the say? The girl from Kenome. Oh, the girl from Yanome. Yanome. Oh, anyway. Like, what is she doing there? She's a guest. She traveled here. Do you think that she was maybe looking for, for them? Because she she went straight to him when it's she saw then, him. Maybe she was, you know... They, they did say Purin was arrested because there was like a warrant on her head. Like she was a criminal and she would, people were looking for her. Well, I know that she tried to shoot him one day. He tried to, to leave. She but... showed up right after this. So yeah, if so she, she, knew... she was after him all along, I'm sure. Of if that. she knew he was traveling with her, which technically he was last time she saw him, then yeah, she could be here because she's looking for him. And then she's seeing also Polona, who is the one that fought her in the end and stuff. So maybe that's going to be a trigger. But she definitely knows that Fushi is over there, and yeah, maybe that's... She, he's also the one, he is the one that gave her the scars and, and led to her, well, her descent into madness. <laughs> I don't know. She was a bit mad to begin with. But she's fighting in a tournament actively, so they'll face each other for sure. She wasn't supposed to, though. Well, I mean, she's a guest. Yeah. She can do whatever she wants. It's just that... I'm guessing she's under the protection of the people that brought her here, so if she dies in the tournament, it's bad. Yeah. But yeah, the whole concept of the prison is interesting because the way they talk about this, it's a prison, but no one is here to run it. So it's not a prison, you know, it's no longer a prison, but they still bring in prisoners. And the ones that are truly dangerous are put aside, like Polona, uh, Polona, like uh, Puran. Puran, yeah. So it's still a prison then. <laughs> I'm guessing. Well, it is a prison because they cannot they cannot just leave. They told it. They told Yeah, them. but the way they talked about this, no one is here to run it. So it's a prison, but the only reason why it's still a prison is because they they keep it going. Maybe people took it over like the Yeah, the, the people the, did the, take the, it the, over. The prisoner is and the prison took it over and just continued to... Or it's just that like they used the to. people that own the prison, you know, they live on the mainland or something, and they make sure that no one leaves this island. Maybe. But on the island, there's no one to keep peace and stuff, so mm. they have to survive themselves. Probably them. So, and it looks like we have, you know, we have prisoners and we have family of prisoners. So, they were brought here, and I'm guessing that's why they were allowed to leave and bring in more people. Well, I've seen babies and young children so yeah, they were some of them were born here yeah. but if they were not born here and brought here later you know like like fushi's not a prisoner and that's why he was brought to you know a separate place than the prisoners like that I, and that explains why as soon as she figured out like oh he's not a prisoner she was like oh i'm sorry i messed up and stuff and she brought him somewhere else good thing daddy cannot mark <laughs> Well, you can't mark, yeah, but still, he's not a prisoner, and she's not a prisoner. She's uh, but she's a family. Oh, she, she's a family of a prisoner, and she's yeah. still stuck on that island. Mm -hmm. So I mean, th there's a problem with this this prison system, <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, as far as as we know, they are also stuck here. Like the way they talk about this, they want to leave, or they don't yeah, want to leave unless their family yeah, leaves. They did say that the the chief of the island can grant yes, that I know. I know, but and like they can live with it. Yeah, I know, but if they're not actual prisoners, that's why I'm saying there's a problem with the system because if they're not actual prisoners, they should be able to leave whenever they want. And yeah. they have left the island to capture Fushi and, and Puran, so they've been granted the, the you know, they can leave. Maybe they don't want to because they have family on the island, so that's why, you know, they're they stick around and they don't just flee as soon as they mm. bring them out there. But um uh, yeah, they want to use that opportunity to yeah, use Fushi to win this so they can all leave the island together. I'm guessing both families and prisoners. Could he do that? Hmm. 
Well, she did say to the other guy that those who committed crime could stay behind and those who didn't could just leave the island. So maybe not the prisoners will go with them. When did she say, like, she said that some the prisoners, the bigger ones, were kept separate from the others, but we saw a bunch of prisoners in the same spot as the families. If you go back, she, she, she said to the guy that those who committed a crime would stay and those who didn't commit a crime could would, would leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. So then they are forced to stay here because they need the permission of the chief of the island to leave. Yeah. So there's a problem with the system. There is a problem with the system. Yeah. I had a hard time, you know, it's, it's not that I had a hard time understanding, but like the way they talked about it, it it's a bit jumbled. You know, we'll have to watch another episode or two to really grasp maybe like what's going on with this, this place because I don't know, it's kind of contradicting itself. Like, it's a prison, but the people on the prison are free, and not all of them are prisoners, but then they're not allowed to leave, but then they, some of them are. Like, you know, it's... Some of them flee. Like, I, I, got, I got that some of them stole boats and tried to flee. And it's the idea that, you know, we are all a community, and we are we all want to survive, so... You if don't I, go behind someone's back to do something. Yeah, and if I want to leave, like, I, I'm guessing they all want to leave, but they don't want to leave on their own. Like, they want the community to survive yeah. and leave with them. So I get it. Like, it makes sense with what they did last episode. And now I, I understand their characters a little better, but they've been lying a lot. And that part of them makes me not trust them yet. yet. Uh, there is something there, though, because like the whole you're not normal, because how can you smile despite living in this place? That's a mask. Yes. They're, they're smiling to, the, they're, they are smiling because they're trying to survive. Yeah, they, they are smiling because they don't want, otherwise they'd be mad. Yeah. She said that last episode, but I don't think Fushi heard. <laughs> so, he, heard he heard it, but I don't think he understand it. Yeah, but he, he didn't care. So, yeah. but now like, he's, he's realizing that this place is, is terrifying and terrible. And they are, it's true, it's fucked up to hear them talk about, oh, we hang traitors around here and stuff. And they have a smile on their face. It's not normal. And he's not, he's never seen that before, but it's, like you said, it's a mask. Like, they are doing this to survive, and they got very triggered by his, by his reaction to them. So, eventually we'll learn what happened, and, and they'll probably open up more. We need to mm -hmm. become friends because we need to connect, <laughs> you know? But, uh, if they don't say anything, that makes it hard for us to trust them. Yeah. And they have been using Fushi ever since they met him, so... We'll see. We'll see what happens. But now it's... It, the fact that they brought in the girl from, from before is interesting. And that new development with the powers is interesting, too. It's really cool. Yeah. And, I mean, Fushi's understanding of death and how death relates to him. I know the creator is saying, you know, you should not care about the death of people who choose to quicken their death and stuff. I'm like, dude... First of all, shut up. You're not human. Like, you don't understand emotions and stuff, as far as I can tell. Yeah. You are not the best to talk about this with Fushi. Fushi is going to start understanding it a lot better than he does eventually, so... You already don't do mess it. up. You already do, technically. Don't mess up Fushi's emotions. We spent the last episode trying to, you know, talk about how this wasn't his fault. Death is a part of life. It's going to happen. You cannot blame yourself. You cannot you know, push everyone away out of fear and stuff. And now the creator is basically saying, well, why should you care? <laughs> no, it's fine to care. It's not what we uh, said. But, uh, and, and I, I love that Fushi, you know, he's being stubborn about this because in a, you know, he was attacked and out of fear and, and instinct, he killed uh, the mole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he killed it. And then, but he reacted so strongly to it. Like, I don't want to be what the creator wants me to be. I don't want to see death as just something that happens and not connect. So he connected so much with that little mole in that one moment. That's kind of why he transformed into it, I feel. You know? Um, like, I, I took it as that. I, uh, I think yes and no. What? Yes, he connected with it. Uh, it's just like what you... Yeah, but he hasn't been able to transform into a crab. Because he, yeah, because he didn't connect with it. He didn't, he didn't see uh, a purpose for his transformation. No, but now that we Sorry. know he can transform into people he's met and you know shared emotions with and experiences with and stuff, it's okay. different. And those were Marge's okay. memories, by the way. It wasn't Fushi. No, it was. She was talking to March. 
If it was, was she? Wait, unless he, he, I mean, he, unless he was over there, but he, I, he was there. He when was, she gave that speech, wasn't he fighting? You know, behind the carriage. I think. In any case, it doesn't matter. But now that we know he can do that, it's gonna change things. But before we knew that, he but, had okay, to have a strong okay. connection with the okay. the things he met or people he met. What if? Do you remember an Attack on Titan? Aaron, when it's he, not the same show, it doesn't matter. Wait, wait. An Attack on Titan. When Aaron tried to transform, yes, he had to hurt himself. But he needed to. Uh, the intent have, needs to be the there. In that case, he well, yeah, but no, because he never intended to transform into Gugu. He doesn't. He didn't even know he died. When Gugu died, he had a strong connection with Gugu, and his body transformed on its own, despite the fight he, he was fighting it. With the mold, you do you really think he wanted to transform into the mold? Yes, to go inside the hole. No, that happened after. No, he transformed. He saw, he saw the hole, he understood that the monk was trying to, uh, yeah, what, 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 what's the verb? What's the verb again? Dig. To, to dig, to go inside the hole, and yeah, okay, okay, okay. with Paloma, I, I, you remember what she said, that she didn't see any purpose and life or death. Mm. So, so you think the mole was the first transformation where he had no strong emotion with? Maybe, any... because technically he didn't have any connection with the crab, and he, did, he, he created a... A dead crab, he didn't, he didn't transform into a crab. So he transformed into the mole out of necessity, like he yeah. transformed into Bologna out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like my, my, he had a deep connection with the mole in that instant better, but yours makes sense. Okay. But both make sense if you think about it, because you're right. The other one is, when, is when, when more it did, cute. When, <laughs> when he did change it to Gugu, it was out of instinct, like he didn't have any control over it. It's not out of, no, when he transformed into March. When he transformed into Goo Goo, when he transformed into the bear and stuff like that, I don't think it was necessarily out of, you know, I need it, so let's do that. No, no, he, he, he didn't control it at first. So he, uh, I think that the first transformation was maybe because of uh, with the connection that he had uh, with the bear, the wolf, the kid, and March, and even Goo Goo, because he didn't chose to transform. But they died. He had yeah. a strong connection with them, and they died. That triggered the transformation. Mm -hmm. But with the mole and with Paloma, he chose out of necessity to transform into those forms. Unless, like, if we, can, if we read it as every time it was out of necessity, maybe it's just, I just lost someone, like, he felt them die and he deeply needed the, to, them to be around, so he transformed into them. That, so every time that it would is be, out of necessity. Yeah, every time it would be out of necessity. Yeah. It's too technical. What do you think about it? No, but it makes <laughs> sense, it's just too technical. And it, it just, <laughs> all of that because of the mole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, it makes sense. And that would explain why now he can suddenly transform into Pilona, despite the fact that she's not around, she isn't dead. She's not dead. And, yet. yeah, and, like, he did have a connection with Pilona, just not as much. It's March who had a connection with Pilona. So that's the thing, like, if, if the people he transforms into had a connection with someone else, and he's got their memories, and he can trigger them, can he transform into people... You know, without necessarily having that connection. And speaking about remembering, do you think that if he tries enough, he can remember them and uh, take back those? I don't think lost? so, because what would be the point of the knockers? They took away the memory. Like, he remembers what he did as them. He remembers stuff linked to them, which is better than not having memories of them, but the image of them is gone. Okay. Yeah. So he can't transform into them anymore. That sucks. Okay. You can't recall, like, he needs to recall the person. He, he recalled Pelona before he transformed into her. If, if he can't recall March because it's a blank figure, he can't transform into her. Okay. It's good. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll see what happens next episode because I'm interested in that rematch with the girl from... Uh, yeah, no me. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's jump to the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't, the next one will be out on YouTube next week, guys. So stay tuned. We're going to see you then. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>